Welcome back to the Notary Podcast hosted by me, Daniel C. Lewis. And this week's, you're not going to believe the guests we have today. We have the GOAT, that's right, the greatest of all times, Notary Coach, Laura Bewer. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Welcome back to the Notary Podcast, hosted by me, Daniel C. Lewis, and I'm so happy that you're here. If you like the content in this podcast, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. Today, like I said last week, we have a very, very special guest. I'm so glad we got this person on. Um, When I started this podcast, and I said this a couple Mm -hmm. of times, when I started this podcast... I was thinking about who could I have on the podcast as a special guest. And this person is one of the people at the top of the list that I got. And I'm so happy that we got this person on the podcast. This person is so busy. A lot of you know her as Coach Me Laura. And I think you can go to her website, coachmelaura.com. She's a notary coach. She's coached. I'm sure hundreds, if not thousands of notaries on how to be successful. She was the founder and organizer of the Notary Symposium. Uh, She is at, she has at your service mobile notary. Uh, She's also the co-founder and uh, faculty for Notary Business Builders Mastermind Alliance. You're not going to want to miss listening to this podcast and listening to our next very special guest speaker. Her name is, and of course, if you haven't known or if you haven't guessed, Laura, hopefully I'm pronouncing it right, Bewer, correct? That's it. That's it. Right. Welcome to the podcast, Laura. Thank you. Wow, it is so great. Thanks for uh, that great introduction. And I'm really, really excited um, to be live with whoever's available to be live with today's podcast, or if you hear the recording, uh, because there are um, uh, so much, there's so much going on in the notary world. And our notary world today is not what it was when Daniel and I started, which Daniel and I met each other early on in our journey at an NNA conference. Uh, And so we both have been on our journeys over the years and have watched the evolution of this business as its own industry, as its own profession, uh, rather than, yes, I uh, notarize at the office, right? Uh, Or uh, I just do loan signings. There's so much more available. And this can be your path um, to financial freedom. This can be your path (laughs) to doing uh, what you want to do uh, within that. And it, who knew for me, because I left being a vice president of a company in the corporate world, um, who knew that that road would be with a vehicle called being a notary? I had no idea that that could take me where I am today. Yeah, yeah. Can, well, can you share your journey to becoming a notary coach and what inspired you to mentor others? Absolutely. So, you know, the first about 18 months to two years, I was floundering a little bit on my own. I had never heard of the NNA. I didn't take a class with them. And I was just trying to figure it out. Uh, I uh, yeah. had become an NSA, another notary who became a lawyer said, hey, why don't you take over my business, um, which in the loan signing is kind of hard, but I did get some leads that way. And she, I shadowed her back then we could do those things. And I started there to actually do that. But I knew there had to be something more, something bigger. And when I started looking around, I really didn't find anything except I found this thing called National Notary Association. And I thought to myself, well, they're having a conference. This is in, I'd already been a notary for a while, but this is in 2005. So a year later, year and a half later, I said, I'm going to go to this conference and see what it's about. Is there more to it than what I know? 
And oh my God, it just opened my eyes. Little did I know I would end up becoming an instructor for them. And I've been doing that for 18 years for California mandated uh, training. Oh, wow. But what that prompted in me was, oh my gosh, who else is like me that's struggling with just understanding the process of notarization and then understanding how to create a business around that. And so I was coaching people when I was just a little bit, a few pages ahead of them, right? As uh -huh. I discovered something, I found out something, it's like, oh, who can I share this with? And it started with uh, meetups. And I started yeah, with meetups yeah. back in 2006. That's when I started with them. So, you know, meetups have been around, but there weren't any for notaries back then. Yeah, yeah. And so that's where I started. And what I found is people were hungry because they too were like me. They couldn't find this information anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so that grew and I did that until 2015. And then I was mm -hmm. coaching people. They just call me. I'd give my phone number out at the seminars I was teaching and said, yeah. if you're stuck with a notary question, just give me a call. So I'm, I'm taking one at a time that way. I'm doing that. And I said, you know, wouldn't it be great if there was like a one day event? Some people can't afford to travel and or go yeah. to a big conference. Wouldn't it be great to have something smaller just in my neck of the woods? Uh -huh. There wasn't anything. So I said, OK, I'll build it. So every time I wanted something and it wasn't there, I decided I'm going to have to build it and they will come. Uh -huh. And that's how that kept rolling. And that I developed some uh, the notary symposium in 2015 mm -hmm. uh, and did that for seven years, both live and online. And uh, that drew more people to say, oh, wow, this is fabulous. But once a year is not enough, what else can you help me with? Yeah. Uh, and so in the meantime, uh, some of you may know Carol Ray. Yeah. Uh, Carol Ray and I were friends and uh, she was the founder of Notary to Pro. And Carol uh, and I started working more and more together. And she found this guy named Bill Soroka. <laughs> and she said, Laura, you've got to meet this guy. I want him to come to your symposium. And this was like two days in front. And could he speak, by the way? And I said, wait, well, Carol, <laughs> I already have my speakers. I mean, everything's all set to the minute. You know how these run, run a show. Yes, yes, to the yes. minute. I said, he could come. He'll be my guest. I'm happy to have him. And I don't really have anywhere for him to speak unless he speaks while people are eating. And that's what I did. I said, okay, send him on over. He came. He spoke for maybe 15 minutes. And this was Bill's first time. And let me tell you, he was nervous. But I was so <laughs> impressed. And they were doing this thing that we later end up calling TNT. And I joined them. And the three of us did that for quite a few years um, while Carol was alive. And then Bill and I just continued it. And then uh, Jennifer Neitzel joined us. And Bill, oh, yeah. Bill was just got too much on his plate. And he said, Laura, I just really can't handle it anymore. Can you and Jen continue? And so we do that on Tuesdays at 1215 Pacific time. It's free. It's an ask me anything type call. Bring in your business question. Bring in your technical questions. We'll address them. And that's what we do on Tuesdays. Uh, later on, uh, as I continue to teach, every time I taught a class for the NNA, and I teach, you know, three or 4,000 people every year for that, I would say, here's my number if you need help. And a lot of it was I gave it away. I wasn't monetizing this. I just wanted to help. Um, and uh, more recently, um, I have coached me, Laura, it's Laura's Inner Circle, and that's Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific time. And that's an hour. Now, that's formatted a little differently. That's me. And I start with an intention for the call. And I do a little a reading of something to set the intention. We might uh -huh. talk about that first and how it applies to us or our industry. And then I'll address questions. If they're not a lot, then what I'll do is pick a topic and say, let's talk about this. What can we learn from this situation somebody called me about? How would you handle it? And we walk through that. And it's a smaller, more intimate group, maybe 30 people, whereas TNT is like 150 people. No. So I have more time to like really dig in there and do that. So and then some people said, look, I don't I don't want group. Can I just talk to you privately? So I established something called um, strategy calls. And so it's free. You just get in my calendar. My calendar is just 
calendly.com forward slash my last name, B word. And you can pick a 15 minute window and then ask me your question and you get wow. 15 minutes free. And sometimes the 15 minutes is just, I had one today. It's like, can you tell me where I can find resources for fingerprinting? Yes. Mm. Here's where I can refer you. Here's what you need to do. These are the steps. Or it might be, I just got my commission. I don't know where to start. Okay. Well, we're going to start with, do you know how to do the job? Do you know how to be a notary? Let's start with the foundation. Then I can start referring you to the business part. So whatever that 15 minutes is, and people can do it more than once, um, but yeah. it's just 15 minutes. That's that's what you get for you want for private, a private little consult. Um, so those are the three things I do, TNT, Laura's Inner Circle, and then the individual calls to help notaries as much as I can. Then I speak at other people's notary events. I stopped doing symposium and said, let me just come to other notary events. <laughs> other notaries were putting them on. It's a lot yeah. of work. Yes. I can put it on and I'll just come and yeah. speak. And I did seven of those last year, seven yeah. different events. Um, and so I love that. And I've been a speaker with the NNA as long as you uh, yeah. actually forever. And uh, you're speaking again this year, right? Yes. And I'm speaking again this year uh, in Vegas and I'll be presenting on um, money. Not so much how to go get the work, but what do you do with the money once you have it? How do you allocate and distribute it? Yes. How do you deal with that when the jobs, one job could be $100, one could be 50, and one could be 200? How do you figure that out? That's what I'm going to help notaries do so that they can chart a path to financial freedom and eradicate debt. That's mm -hmm. my goal with that. And I'll be doing that at the NNA. And then, of course, C and TDA, we're going to do a trust call with attorneys. Yes. So, wow, yeah. that's the kind of stuff. And then NBB, uh, yeah. you know, part of that. Talk about NBB a little bit, exactly what that is. Yeah. So Notary Business Builder is a collaboration between Jennifer, Bill, and then he has about six or seven other cohorts. And all of us together, about 12 different people, bring a different expertise yeah. to this community. And so there are about um, 20 different live calls a month on different kinds of expertise. I do mindset, I do trust, and I do um, specialty work. And like Jennifer does the marketing call. Mm -hmm. And some of the other people, one does LinkedIn, Sandra Long, who authored the book on LinkedIn uh, with Bill for notaries. So we all bring in a different um, expertise for that. And then we created a archive a replay archive so if people can't attend 20 calls a month because they're actually working they can come and watch uh, the replay instead so um we've done community things we've met up at the nna conference there were about 25 30 of us and so we sometimes we have different things we're going to have the notary cruise coming up in september of 25 to alaska that's oh that's, nice that's a big experience so we gave a lot of notice and there's about 50 of us that are bringing spouses and friends, and we are going to go check out Alaska. Uh, I think Bill's going to be doing a little bit about writing, like writing workshops, and I'm going to do a couple mindset, and that's all, just enough in the front and the back so you can write it off. <laughs> you know, yes. It's an expensive trip. Yes. And so that's that's another type of event. And we're, we're focusing more in 2025 of, of doing live experiences, number one, like that notary cruise, mm -hmm. and more in-depth learning on a particular topic rather than trying to put together a lot of different people with different expertise and getting just a little snippet of each. People really, they're like, they get excited about something, but they don't know enough to really dig into it. And yeah. that's the direction I'm I'm going now. Very good. Very good. So what are the most common challenges notaries bring to you and how do you help them overcome these obstacles? Oh, fabulous. So one of the biggest challenges is just being competent at the work. So that's the first thing. New notaries come to me and say, I'm not sure how to perform the notarization because some states don't provide training at all. Some yep. states provide only limited training, even California that does six hours, it's all about the law 
and it doesn't spend time talking about documents and how to know what the right notarization is and how to look for the instructions and all the different things that you need to know just to be confident and competent. So that's one set of challenges, and that typically would be new notaries. I also get experienced notaries who just get something so complicated, they're like, I don't know how to deal with this. And mm -hmm. they don't usually book a call. They just call me and say, I'm at the table and I need help. This is beyond the NNA. NNA has a hotline and that's they're going to tell you the law says this. And that's what their job is. But they're not on the business end of it. And mm -hmm. so sometimes, you know, the public brings us things that are just twisted and we have to figure out how to help them, but stay in our lane as a yeah. country, right? And not step over into the unauthorized practice of law. So I get that. Then the other biggest challenges I get are, I, I want to start a business. I got my commission, but I want to start the business. And I'm not sure, is loan signing the right direction? Or should I do hospitals? Or should I do trust? Or gosh, there's so much available. Where do I start? And so that's a common for me to get that. And so I usually want to know a little more about their story. Why did they become a notary? What yeah. previous life experience are they bringing to this kind of work? Mm -hmm. um, their comfort level with working with yeah. the public and traveling. Uh, so that's that kind of call. So those are the probably the most common. And then I do get calls on things I don't really know a lot about, but I might have resources. So I'm not yeah. a paper printer. I, I am certified. I've done the work. I've probably done over a thousand people, but I did it under the umbrella of the NNA for notaries at their workshops. I didn't go do the business. So if somebody wants to understand a little bit more about the technical part of doing the job, I can help you. If you want to know how to build that business, I'm not going to be able to help you with that. But I know people who can help you with that. So I try to be a connector. Yeah. And I think super connector is what we what we want. Um, for me, um, I'm a manifester. I'm a super manifester, as a matter of fact. Uh, and I'm a connector. So I try to get people hooked up where they can get more than perhaps what I could give. I really like that. I'm a manifester. I really like that. I'm going to borrow that. I'm a manifester. Yes. Yes. What, what advice do you give to notaries who are struggling to find clients or grow their business? So I tell them first, what kind of clients are you looking for? You, you want to identify the kind of clients you're targeting because then you can kind of reverse engineer from there. All right, so what kind of documents are they going to need that might be notarized? So for yeah. instance, if I'm choosing trust work, then where does that come from? So trust work comes from two sources. One, it comes from attorneys, legal plans, paralegals. All right. So there, there's that grouping. And there's a method, uh, a marketing plan that you can develop to build authentic relationships with them to become part of their team, not their vendor, but their team, a partner. And then the other way, of course, is on the Internet and having great SEO and presence because Individuals can download Trust in Will, Legal Zoom, Rocket Lawyer, mm -hmm. all the do-it-yourselfers, and mm -hmm. I get a lot of those. Um, so make sure that you've got a Google Business profile. Make sure you're in the right directories, and that you're as visible yeah. as you can be to that audience. And between the two audiences, that's how the clients are going to come to you. Okay, can you share a success story from one of your uh, coaching clients that you're particularly proud of? Wow. Well, yeah. Um, Jen Cooper, I don't know if you know Jen, uh, but she's in Fresno, California. So she's a couple hours from me. Mm -hmm. um, and she joined into our MBB, but I've done some one-on-one -on -one coaching with her and she's right at my heels. I'm telling you, she has developed several courses that are on her website now. Mm -hmm. She has her own networking group in that mm -hmm. um, part of the valley, Fresno, Bakersfield yeah. area. Um, she's doing a live goal setting workshop coming mm -hmm. up in December. Um, 
uh, she's, uh, she applied to speak at the conference. She didn't get in because there were just too many good ones. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So she'll probably try again next year so that she can start speaking. She writes tremendous blogs that mm -hmm. some of you may have read. She's done some great blogging and she has a YouTube channel. So here's somebody, and she's only been a notary since 2020. She came in right mm -hmm. at COVID time and she was, didn't know anything about the business. As a matter of fact, in 2020, when I did a symposium that was online <laughs> she attended and she wasn't a notary yet yeah, yeah and that's how she got started and so here's a notary who's been doing it for four years she's got title direct work for the loan signing she's got attorney mm -hmm. set up for her trust work um of course she does all of the um other opportunities general opportunities for the public right there in town she's yep. writing the blogs she's delivering workshops Oh my God, she is the next Laura. She'll be <laughs> note, which is good because you know I'm at that age where it won't be long before I'll wind down some of what I'm doing and and look at retirement because you know I've yeah. got two little grandchildren and I want to spend time with them when they're little when they want to yeah. see me. When they get to a certain age, they're like, "Hey, I'm too busy for you." Yes, yes, yes. I totally get that. Totally get that. That sounds like a great success story. Um, how, how do you see the role of notaries evolving in the next few five years? Wow. So one, I see technology playing a huge role. It already does in what, about 44, 45 states with mm -hmm. RON. Of course, there's four or five of us, California being one of them, that aren't there yet. Mm -hmm. So technology is going to be a big change for us when it comes in yeah. California. For those who are already doing it, I see changes happening because there's there's still issues with the technology. There are issues mm -hmm. with, with fraud and knowing somebody's really the person that's yeah. in front of you with how they're so fast with AI that, yes. you know, with a deep fake, you don't really know. You think it's them, but is it them? Yeah. yeah. Is this me? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> right? Yes. I think that's going to be something that's going to continue to evolve and so that we can get better at being able to determine I'm really talking one to a live person, not a, a an a AI person a uh, and that it's the right person yeah, uh, and that they're willing. And that's probably the biggest part that they're willing to sign um, the documents because there's so much out of our control when we're just on screen mm -hmm. like you and I are. So I think that's going to be one big thing. And I think that um, as we continue Everybody will be on with technology and platforms. I think the platforms will get better. They'll be more cost effective. Right now, they're kind of expensive. Yes, uh, yes. And so uh, for some notaries, they're like, why would, Why do I want to pay that if I'm really a mobile? Because you know what? Mobile's not going to go away. First of all, not all lenders will accept it. It's yes. not as big as you think, right? Yes. The real estate world. Number two, some people just don't want to do their private business online because they don't feel secure about yeah. that or don't yeah. have the equipment or they're in a location where they don't have the equipment. So mobile business is not going away. People still want to talk face to face. They still yeah. want that interaction. Um, I just took care of a person just for a power of attorney at her home. And um, about halfway through our conversation, as I was working through the assignment, she had mentioned her sister lived with her, but she died five months ago. Oh, so yeah. here's a woman who's been she had been living for 15 years with her sister, older, mm -hmm. woman, and now she's alone the last five months. And and I mm. I had to stop mm. and say, you know what? This isn't just about business right now. Yeah. Yeah. She and so by the, I slowed it down. We talked. Tell me about your sister. And I used a little more time with her. And by the time I left, she said, thank you for coming. I haven't talked to anybody in person mm. because she's very limited in mobility to get mm -hmm. out. I don't know in how long. Everything's by the phone. And my yeah. son lives in Nevada. And I don't have anyone to talk to anymore. Thank yeah. you for coming. And so I didn't just take care of a power of attorney for her. I think in that yeah. moment, I did a lot more yeah. for, for her her social well-being to have contact with another person. Yeah. And I think that when notaries are doing this job, we can provide more than the actual stamp on the document 
if we are focused on that. Um, sometimes we don't know the situation we're walking into. And so I think that, uh, and we lose a little of that when we use the technology. So for me personally, even when California, yeah. will be till 2030, I'll probably be retired by then anyway. <laughs> I don't intend to ever use that method yeah. because of the interaction is what I want, that face-to-face -face communication, because I know I give more value in that appointment time with them than I could when I'm online. And you are paid in direct proportion to the value you bring. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if people are like, I'm not getting yes. much money. Think about, are you doing more than notarizing? Yes. Yes. Such a good, such great examples. Well, on, on a topic of the notar notary industry, what emerging trends should notaries be on the lookout for uh, to stay competitive in this industry? So I'm going to tell you, even though I wrote a book about all these different specialties, I will tell you that loan signings aren't going away. This is something that's going to happen. People don't have cash to buy houses. It's going to, it's going to continue. So I always recommend have your credentials ready for that because whatever form it takes, you want to be prepared so yes. that you can still be competitive in that particular uh, area of expertise. I think another one that is upcoming and it's really been building, I'm seeing it now, is because of COVID, what happened, trust work is just increasing tremendously and attorneys are starting to work from they're they're like they had a taste of working remotely from mm -hmm. home and sending yeah. out a notary and now they're like i don't know if i want to go back to an office and be tied to the office and okay. wait for the customer to come so they're using mobile notaries to do trust work and of course it would be good if you knew something about that and that's why we have a course yeah by trust uh notary delivery agent um, so I think trust work, and that's not going to go away because guess what? People are going to die. Yeah. Right? People are going to become incapacitated and yeah. they need documents to facilitate that. So I think that's another one. People are mobile. They're going out of the country. They've got stuff happening out of the country. Apasti work. That is another big one that is increasing for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't even target that, but I'm getting more and more business mm -hmm. from that because students are studying abroad. They need a whole boatload of documents notarized. Uh, uh, destination weddings outside yes. of the U.S., that's another reason that yes. people need them. National, uh, what are they called? Nationalists, people who are U.S. citizens that go live for a while overseas yeah. for whatever their reason is, including military. Um, that's another reason. So I think yeah. loan signings, trust work, apostille are the three biggest opportunities for notaries where... Um, where either you don't have to be in a travel-friendly state because it's packages or in apostille, yeah. you're not regulated for the part that you play as a facilitator. So I think those are the big ones. There's lots of other ones that yeah. people could be doing to dip their toe in, but those are the three big ones I see. If we can go back to, at the beginning of that, you said you wrote a book and that's called Beyond Loan Signings, correct? Correct. And isn't that book, because I just came back from Maryland Notary Day, and they're asking for books uh, that we can refer to them. Your book in particular, isn't it on Audible now? So they can listen to that going to and from uh, yeah. their assignments. Yeah. Um, and you know what, guys? I probably go through about 30 to 40 books a year, myself reading, and it has to be on Audible. Because I don't have time to sit and read a book the way I used to. I might yeah. buy the book because there's exercises or things I might want to do later. And I'll buy it for that purpose. But I listen to it as I'm going to my different appointments. Because I spend so much time in my car. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's like, uh, it's kind of like a YouTube university, right? You just, yeah. you're in your car university and you're yeah. listening to the books. Uh, and so I love that we were able to convert it into an audible book um, and uh, it's on Amazon. Uh, and yeah, if you haven't had a chance uh, to take a look at that in that book, guys, are going to be 13 different specialties you could look at and not all of them require even a commission. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, I highly recommend that book. I had had a time to look through it and read through it. 
It's called Beyond Loan Signings. It's on Amazon. You can buy the book or get it on Audible. Yeah, and you can get a Kindle as well. Kindle, yes. Very good. And then you said something about trust work. When you say trust work, can you just explain that a little bit more? Uh, Because people need a little bit more of an explanation of what is trust work? So trust work is part of what they call estate planning documents. And uh, some of you may get asked for individual ones like powers of attorney, health care directive or last will. That's a common request that I get when I go to hospitals. Mm -hmm. That's not a trust. Those are just individual documents that uh, are permission slips, basically, to help you if you're incapacitated and when you go. A living trust, a revocable living trust, is a set of documents that include a power of attorney and health care. But now Mm -hmm. the will is different. It's called a pour over will. And it goes together in a binder with a document called a trust. And what that document does yeah. is it is your instructions. If I can't speak for myself, here's who's in charge and here's what I want to have happen. So it allows you to name people and say what their powers are. And mm-hmm. they can then, um, you're the trust, <clears throat> you're the trustor or settler, the person who created this. And think of it as a contract. That's really what it is. It's a contract. And you're saying, hey, I'm creating this contract, so I'm the owner of it, and I'm going to name a manager. I'm going to name somebody to manage all my stuff while I'm alive. Oh, Mm. I'm going to name me. That's the trustee. I'm going to name me, and I'm going to use all my stuff however I want, buy, sell, whatever, Mm. during my lifetime while I'm able to say so. Mm. Now, what if I can't say so? Now I'm going to name a successor to me. So that if I'm alive, I need to utilize those assets to pay for my care, whatever it is. Now they can just step up and start taking care of those things for me. And then it it goes on to say, by the way, here's how when I go, here's who should get the estate and how it how it should be split up. So that's what the trust document does. It's probably going to be about 40 pages long. It's notarized. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other document that comes after it is going to be the pour over will. And it's a very short version of the will that yeah. says, you know what? I already said everything in the trust. Go look there. Mm-hmm. And then you'll have your power of attorney financial, health care directive. You also might have a guardianship document that's notarized. If you have minor children could be in there. You're going to have a deed if you have property, which is why most yeah. people do a trust, because that keeps it out of probate. And it says... Um, hey, the trust owns it, not me. Yeah, I own the trust, but the trust owns the property. So now it doesn't have to go through probate. Yeah. Uh, and then you might have, uh, there might be corporation documents. If you have a business, that's a corporation. Yeah. That might be in there with the resolution. So yeah. these are the kinds of documents. They're usually the same kind most of the time. They depend, you know, uh, each attorney can have it slightly different, but those are the types that you'll find in there. Usually when you're doing that business, Instead of charging by the notarization, you charge for a package, kind of like you do loan signings. And so um, it would include your travel. It would include the notarization. It would include collection of signatures that are not notarized. It might include getting the binder back to the attorney if they want it in person or they'll usually it just stays with the person. Yeah. What they'll ask for is can you scan back just the signature page and your certificate? Yeah. So I'm only scanning about 18, 20 pages, and I do that with my phone right at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of, and usually I'm one of the witnesses to the will as long as it's not notarized. It's usually just witnessed with two people. Yes. So it's, not, it's not notarized, then I can offer that service up free. It doesn't cost yeah. Me. So that's what that would look like. Yes. Yeah, and you offer uh, a comprehensive training program on that, correct? Uh, I do uh, in collaboration with Bill Soroka and Jennifer Neitzel, and it's called CNTDA, Certified Notary Trust Delivery Agent. Mm -hmm. And it goes through how do you market to get the business? It goes through what are the common documents in a trust? Do you actually see them? I walk you through every single one and what you should be looking for and how they're notarized. Then we talk about um, uh, what goes after that. I, don't, I usually don't go through it module by module. Uh, mm-hmm. but there's some other sections as well yeah. uh, that support it. 
and then there's actually an ethics section and then there's yeah. an exam of like 10 questions and then if you pass that exam you're called certified to mm. handle trust work and why that's important yeah because you know what you don't have to be certified to notarize documents from a trust yeah why we develop that is that attorneys want notaries who understand their business yes or what their documents are called yes they have to call and talk to the attorney they can speak articulately about it yes and they can navigate the documents just like you would in a loan signing this is your trust this is what it does here's where you sign it i'm going to notarize it okay here's your pour over will here's what it does so it's the it's very much patterned or modeled after the loan signing training Mm -hmm. that people go through so that it's easier for you to navigate the, the documents with your clients. And now they feel confident, even though they went through all of them with their attorney, you're just going to remind them, remember this document we talked yeah. about? And, and that's what attorneys would like. They want notaries that know how to do more than stamp a document. And so they're yeah. going to pay more. Yeah. yeah. What, so what, what's your perspective on remote online notarization and how has it impacted the notary profession, you think? Well, I think there's been a pretty big impact. I mean, I can't say it hasn't, even though it's not in my state yet. Mm -hmm. um, my personal take on it is that it's, an, it's a big experiment at the moment, and things haven't all been worked out yet. But yeah. states are doing it, and we're learning as yeah. we go. And some mm -hmm. states are repealing laws, changing laws, adding new laws, and yes. figure out there's problems. So yes. right now, in the over the next you know five years, we've got a lot of this, a lot of change going on. So make sure you're staying on top of what yeah. state laws are in terms of RON, uh, because there's going to be changes happening, and they're already happening. Yeah. Uh, however, I think at the end of about a five year period, we're going to see all the states doing it. We're going to yeah. see less platform choices out there, the ones that survive. And can handle what's necessary to yeah. have confidence in the system, and I and I think that it will expand, and I think it's a great option for some people. It's a great option for yeah. people that are out of the country. There are Americans that aren't here. Yeah. That great option for them. Great option for military who also are stationed outside of yeah. the country. Um, yeah. It's not it's not so good for people who can't pass KBIs, you know, they yeah. the, the five questions. Yeah. And if you don't have a social security number, it doesn't work for you. And if you don't have a credit history, it doesn't work for you. So it still doesn't work for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's why we're never going to lose the face to face stuff. But I think we will get over that tipping point and it yeah. will be uh, probably at least half of the work. Yes. Uh, and it will spill over into other areas, not just real estate. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Well, what what would you say has been the most rewarding part of your career as a notary coach? I would most say rewarding. the most rewarding part for me is when somebody emails me, calls me, texts me or posts on social media um, and says, you know what, because Laura guided me this way, I was able to do X. When people tell me that their business is up and running or that their business has uh, gained traction and now they're making the kind of money they were hoping to make. Or when they yeah. tell me, you know what, this happened and I knew what to do. I knew how to handle it. I, I didn't feel scared by it. Uh, I didn't say no to the opportunity because yeah. I had enough foundation that I could say, okay, here are our options uh, on this. Uh, those are the most rewarding parts for me when I'm coaching others. Yeah. The most rewarding part for me as a notary, because I'm a practitioner, guys, I'm an active notary. I probably notarize um, uh, at least 100 different uh -huh. signatures every month, every month, yeah. every month, yeah. every day I have notary appointments. So I teach the law. I coach notaries. Yeah. I a practitioner of the business yeah. as well. So I have to stay on top of what's going on. I can't say, well, yeah, 10 years ago when I used to do notarizations, this is how it was. Yeah. And, and I would say, if you're looking for a coach, not just me, there's others like me out there, ask them, are you notarizing still? How many notarizations do you do a month? 
right? What kind of specialties are you working on? Make sure that they're active and that they are continuing to be on top of what's happening now. Yeah. Not just how it was five years ago. Because I think some, uh, that's on the one end. Here's on the other end, guys. If they've been a notary for a minute, they haven't been a notary long enough to be yeah. coaching you. Um, yeah. They didn't yeah. go through the several different cycles for loan signings that Daniel and I have gone through. Yeah, yeah. Went through 2008 and survived it. It yeah. happened again. And of course, this last year or two have not been great. They haven't been a crash, but they haven't been great. So we have seen the ups and the downs. We've been through the COVID time. We had to be creative and figure out how do I do this yes. process when I'm restricted to six feet, when I'm restricted to it, they want to do it in the garage outside yeah. the foot of the car, right on top of the trash can. I've done it all over the place. So you want a coach who has some experience behind them and uh, and I would ask questions like, what was your most difficult one? Was there a time you had to say no? Ask the hard questions because yeah. if they just did stuff and it wasn't a problem for them, what are they going to coach you on? Yeah. Right? Yeah. When's the last time they looked at the law book? So make sure that they've been coaching for more than a minute and make sure if they've been doing it for 20 years, are they still doing it? Yes. Yes. Sustainability. Definitely. We, yeah. you, you talk about your resources. So I'm sure that I have this right because I've been taking notes. Beyond Loan Signings is a great resource. Your mm -hmm. TNT, that's on Tuesdays. Great At 12 15. 12 15. Um, uh, specific time, right? Yeah, I'm California, guys. Yeah, California. And you have uh, Saturday morning. Laura's uh, Inner Circle. Laura's Inner Circle on that. And that seems like. Uh, I know the beyond uh, loan signage, you'll get that on Amazon, but the yeah. TNT, uh, that's a free resource, isn't it? It is. And if you go to notarycoach.com yeah. forward slash TNT, you can get the link. Wow. Zoom call. That's yeah. all it is. So, and we don't change that link. So yes. it's the same one. And mine's the same way. You go to my website, coachmelaura.com, give me your email. I'll send you the link. I don't change it. Um, now, I don't record them. So even though there's replays on TNT, mine's yeah. an intimate group. Mine's uh, not recorded, so people don't have to worry about they yeah. were recorded about what they said. Yeah. A little safer space that way. And then, yeah. of course, I do the three strategy calls, and that would be calendly.com forward slash my last name. B word, B-I-E-W. Oh, really? Okay, so you got a lot of resources that people can plug into, and also they can find you. You do speaking engagements all over the country, plus you're going to be at the National Notary Association That's doing right, a speaking will. engagement this June in um, Henderson Vegas. or Las Vegas. Yes, yeah. yes, that would be very yeah, good. The Green Valley, Green Valley Resort, just outside of Vegas. Yes. Yeah. Very nice place. Very nice resort. Yeah. Been there many times. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend it. Now, can you share what's next for you and your coaching business? Yeah. Um, so some of you may or may not know that, you know, I'm getting towards that age that I'm I'm trying to find ways to identify what I want to do because mm -hmm. I'll be retiring from the teaching gig I have with the NNA in another yeah. year. So what am I gonna be doing? Well, I'm, I'm gonna be coaching. That's still gonna happen in the group settings, like yeah. to many, and uh, that's two times a week. I'm still gonna be doing the strategy calls. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to speak one time a year at the NNA as long as they'll have me, plus one. So that means there's only one event you would find me at. Uh, cause I don't want to be traveling around the world. I want to be with my, my grandkids. Yes. And the other thing I'm going to be doing is one, um, live workshop. So the workshop is going to be different. It's a one day event. So think about all the different one day events that <clears throat> notaries put on in their local areas and they bring in a bunch of different speakers. Yeah. My goal is to do it differently. I'm either going to be the speaker or I'm going to bring in only yeah. the expertise I don't have. And we're going to talk about one thing only. So I have something like that, that that's in development at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in April of 2025 on a Saturday. And it's going to be oh. the event. And that's going to be on hospital, long-term care, and hospice work for notary. Oh, wow. 
So I will be having a hospice nurse there to talk about assessment issues we have with people who are in any one of those environments and <clears throat> they might be medicated. Yeah. What, what are the things we can do to assure they want to sign the document? We're going to talk about, or I'm going to have an attorney there to talk about a, a competency from yes. the standpoint of litigation after the fact. Yeah. We, we thought they were okay. And the family yes. said, no, no, we shouldn't have done it. So I'm yes. going to have that person part of that conversation. And I'm going to talk about alternatives that you should know about, such as signature by mark, signature by proxy, yeah. witnesses, right? Those alternative things you don't do very often. Do I have those available to me in my state so that because they're more likely to come up with these yes. patients, right? These kinds of customers. And so um, Bill Soroka is going to be helping me with that. And Jen Neitzel will be helping me with that on the marketing side. I'm pretty much delivering the <laughs> content because I've been doing hospitals for 20 years. So I think I've got, wow. got that down. And so you can watch social media for that. I'll probably start announcing that in um, yeah. January. I just have to confirm the date with the hospice. They have a huge conference room. I believe it seats a hundred. And so that's the limitation because you know, when you do it physically, there's a limitation with your room size. So yeah. if it's a hundred, that's all I can accommodate. If it's 75, that's all I can accommodate. Uh, so once we get that nailed down, we'll start making announcements. Excellent. Excellent. You heard it first here. Yeah. And that's that's coming up in April, right? April. Everybody It'll be April. a Saturday in April. Yeah. So keep your calendars posted. And one, one final question for you. Um, if you can give one piece of advice to a notary just starting out, mm -hmm. what would it be? I think get into a community. Join a community. There are several of them out there. You've got Notary Stars with Ronnie Mickle. You've got uh, Notary Business Builder. You've got, um, uh, doesn't uh, Elaine have an actual community? Yes. Like her event? Uh, yep. Elaine Ray Harris has a community. There are so many communities available uh, to you. And if you can get into a community, you're going to find coaches, you're going to find leaders, you're going to find information and resources. And that would be my first stop to be a part of a notary community mm -hmm. because we are not uh, a yeah. petition. We are collaborators and we can help each other yes. move forward. Right. Uh, so that's how I see it. And that's why I have communities. Yeah, su such powerful, powerful advice. In fact, we do notary meetups here in Indiana. And uh, just to give you an example of why that's so powerful, um, there was a lady that came a couple of months ago to the notary in-person meetup. Yeah. She's been a notary for 25 years. And she came in. I always invite her to the meetups, always invite her to the trainings, the luncheons, the conferences. She never comes. But she came to the meetup and she said, uh, she came to the front of the room and said, hey, I I just, um, last year, the, the industry is so slow, I only made $4,200 um, for the whole year. Yeah. And then there's a lady who just started uh, two years ago and she said, I just deposited eight thousand dollars into my bank account because she yeah. comes to the community. Things like this, the TNT, the Beyond Loan signings, mm -hmm. the um, thing you do on Saturday mornings, the trusted, uh, 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 the trusted, uh, what is it called? It's the, hard. The certified trust delivery agent. Yes, that's a mouthful. That's a but, whole community, yes. and we have we we have monthly calls that we continue after you're certified. We don't drop you every month. I lead a call on that. Yeah, the notary business builder, uh, mastermind, and all of that I consider is like oil for your business. It lubricates your business so you can run that business like a fine tuned machine. Mm -hmm. Being plugged into things that Laura's doing, uh, listening to this podcast each week, because we have uh, great speakers every week, it helps you just lubricate your business so that you're running a positive and you're running a more efficient business every every month. So Laura, I wanna thank you so much for taking the time. I know you can see her schedule is jam packed and she gives a lot of free resources 
that Beyond Loan Signing, I want to highly recommend that book. I've read that book. If you're new starting off, even if you're seasoned, you want to grab that book and review that book. That'll be a great book for your reference library, Beyond Loan Signings. Definitely check her out on TNT, her and Jan Knightzel, right? Yeah. Yes. They do a great, I've, I've caught a couple of their episodes. They do a great job on that. Just going to these uh, type of events is going to really help your business um, become very successful, very efficient, very, uh, any, any last thoughts you want to share, Laura? I want to say this, um, of all the professions anybody could choose, if you're not going to be a fireman, a policeman, right? If you're not going to be a first responder in that kind of profession, here's your opportunity to be a first responder for your community, right? Oh, because it's not just the public. You're serving your community. And there are documents that are proactive for them that you can help them with. There are documents that are after the fact you can help them with. There are um, services you can provide when and where they need it. Yeah. And that is the true value of being a public official in this way. You know, a lot of people are like public officials. They don't help. They're they're not helpful. We really are. Yes. We really, um, uh, we just really are let in to the most important milestones of people's lives. Right. And mm -hmm. so it could be adoption. There's just so many things. And so, you chose a profession that's so noble and really provides true service to help yep. people. So thank you very much for allowing me to share a little bit about that because I love being a notary yes. and a manifester. Yes. And I think the notary, I tell people all the time, notary work is the sexiest job you can have. Ever. I, yes, ever. Well, thanks again for coming. I got to have you come back. Because you are, it just was fantastic. Got to have you come back right before your, so right before the April event that you have. Okay. So we yeah. can really promote that also. So Beautiful. thanks so much for coming. Um, I'm checking the chat because we had some people come in and out. If there's any questions you want to ask really quickly, uh, you can put it in the chat or you can raise your hand. Any questions out there? I'm looking at chat now. I'm not seeing anything right now. But if uh, you Hi, Daniel. hey, is that Laura this is, Jarrett? This is Laura Jarrett. It is. Oh, Laura. Uh, hi, how are you? I am good, Laura. I get to see you uh, for ambassadors. Otherwise, I don't really get to see you very much. Yes, and unfortunately, you can't see me right now. Um, I have a prior commitment, uh, community service commitment that I'm actually working on, but I wanted to at least uh, join the call long enough to, as long as I could, to show my support, Daniel, for what you're doing. Uh, oh, thank you. That it is a Virginia meetup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, did you have any questions for the other Laura? Uh, Laura, I heard your presentation. Very great information that you shared. Um, I mean, took in a lot. Uh, and I mean, I just, as I was listening to it, I, I'm like, yes, yeah, this is an area that I have uh, actually worked in somewhat, but probably could do a lot more in it. Um, so it was just very, very uh, beneficial to me hearing what you were saying. And uh, one of the things that you also mentioned was about the Audible book, and we were just talking about that in the ambassador meetings about the, yes. you know, having those books. And I, yeah. even when I heard the comment, I thought to myself, that would be great because I, like you, do not have time to sit down and read books, but I can listen because I have a lot of windshield time. But yes, yes I thank you for sharing all of that information that you uh, actually presented to us on today. Oh, thank you. And 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 guys, I, I want to just leave you with this thought. The more I share, the more I give, the more I get. Yes. I, that's how it works. And so yes. notaries who I've helped end up helping me somewhere down the line. I don't do it for that reason, but that's how it works in the universe, guys. You need to put it out there and give. Yes. And that's how you manifest. That's how you get what you want. Help other people get what they want. Absolutely, absolutely true. That that's so true. It's like uh, karma. 
That's what it is. It's karma coming back. Very, very good. All right. I think that I'm I'm taking up so much of your time, Laura. I think I'm Love so it. happy that you've been able to come. Definitely go check out her book, Beyond Loan Signings, her TNT show, her Saturday morning show. Go on her Calendly. If you want just one-on-one -on -one coaching, you want to definitely do that. Uh, she's fantastic. I've known her for many years. It's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be good. And definitely, definitely check her out in Las Vegas at the National Notary Association Conference. So any final thoughts, Laura? Um, just about that upcoming conference. Remember, I'll be talking about when you do get money, what are you yeah. supposed to be doing with it? What and you how can do? you eradicate debt? Yes. Some of us go into debt to get into this business. So then we got to figure out how to get rid of that so we get to keep more of our money. And that's what I'm going to talk about uh, I'll let other people talk about how to get more jobs, but I, I see notaries struggling with how, how to divvy up that money between tax obligations uh, and paying yourself first. Because if no. you're not paying yourself first, there's nothing left over for you. Yeah, that, That's that where you start. Such a timely, timely subject because for my clients, I'm seeing more and more of my clients want notaries that are financially fit. That's Meaning right. that they, they don't have a bunch of debt. They don't have low credit scores. They're financially fit. They're, they're managing right. their, their finances, their personal finances uh, better. And I can see that in the future. Uh, I can see in the future 90% of the clients going to say, what's that notary's credit score? Um, yeah. When they do the background screening, if this low 400s, I don't need them on my, my assignment. So exactly. such a great... You're not going to want to miss that. That's going to be at the National Notary Association yeah. Conference. You're not going to want to miss that workshop there. So, Okay. Or kudos. All right. If you like this podcast, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, okay. I'm so happy to have Laura here. We're going to have more great speakers like Laura. Laura is a National Notary Association ambassador. Also, Laura Jared is a National Notary Association yeah. ambassador. So we our hope last call. <laughs> yes. 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 On the last <laughs> one. <laughs> All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this. Hopefully come back next week. We're going to have more great content next week, each and every week. And we'll see you soon.